Um, another question for you, Matt. In the news, Apple TV Plus, first streaming service to win Best Picture at the Oscars uh, with Coda. A um, couple of questions here is, one, have you seen that? Because I have not. Did you watch the no, movie? No, I have no idea what that even is, honestly. I don't know either. I feel so bad. <laughs> and the other thing that's interesting, and I don't, I'm not in the film TV world, so I can't comment on this, but I did see, you know, there's a lot of controversy because yes, Coda won. And that is good because Apple TV plus was the first, you know, streaming service to get best picture. Very cool. Though. Didn't, did Netflix not get a best picture before that? Was it thought, Roma Netflix? I thought so too. Thought Maybe so, I'm wrong on this. Yeah. I, I, whatever the case may be. Apple TV plus has gotten some accolades, but some are critical saying, well, that film was just already done and Apple bought the distribution rights to it. So does that mean Apple had a hit with TV plus or does that mean that Apple, you know, got lucky that was not an Apple original program, which sort of, you know, I don't know one way or the other where that conversation goes. But what I am interested on is, you know, sort of as we stand now in 2022 and as we have more rumors of Apple subscription services, which we'll get into, what is the state of Apple's subscription services now? And I think if I my memory serves me well, it would be News Plus, Apple Arcade, Fitness Plus, Music, iCloud Plus, and TV Plus. Too many pluses. Am I missing something? Uh, no. Six services. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I'm trying to. So think. we might be missing. Oh, Apple can, Apple Music. Did you say that? I think I got that. Okay. <laughs> and of course, you can bundle all this with Apple One, which I have not opted to do because of all those, the streaming ser- or the services of Apple I use are I pay for iCloud storage with Family Plan, which is technically iP- iCloud Plus. I have Apple TV Plus subscription, and that's it. I don't use Fitness Plus. I don't use anything else. And I think definitely there's a hierarchy of the services that are doing better than others. But before I get into that, Matt, what Apple services are you subscribed to and why are you subscribed to those and not everything? Or are you subscribed to everything? Are you on Apple One and that's it? No, I'm not on Apple One, surprisingly. Usually I'm the kind of person who just subscribes to everything, but not this time. I have iCloud Storage, which is plus. I think, yeah, I'm, I got two terabytes. I think that's what Same. my plan is. Yeah, and I got that because I've been looking for a way to uh, basically not have anything on my actual computer so that no matter which computer I go to, I just have everything at at a, at a glance whenever I need it. And iCloud seems to be the best way because it integrates right into files. I like it a little bit better than Google Docs or Google Drive, which we use Google Drive as well. But yeah, so that's why I have two terabytes there. And then I have Apple Music, which I like because of my AirPods Max. I like having the Dolby and the lossless audio, even though the lossless doesn't even work with the AirPods Max, but hey, that's just me. Um, and, you know, I actually use that pretty often. And then... That's it. <laughs> yeah, I think we're or, or what's the oh Apple TV? I have Apple TV Plus, but I've never actually paid for Apple TV Plus. I don't think because I think I got some other promotion that gave it to me for free. <laughs> I'm still on like the three month trial too. I signed up and then I was on it because they basically gave it away forever, and then it ended, and then I didn't pay pay for it, and then you could get like a three month thing through Target. So I got my wife on there, so I'm using hers. I'm trying to see, and here's what's funny too is I love Apple for so many reasons, but I also hate them because I was just looking right now. Their iCloud um, storage plans are criminal because it's they make you pay for one. Yeah. Because if if anyone who's done any tech support for their family members knows that the, the first thing of iCloud is that it's perfect for anyone because it backs up contacts, calendars, photos. Big thing is photos. Everybody's always curious about yeah. that. It just backs it up. So if you get a new phone, that's just the easiest way to do it. And all my family members, I'm like, you just, you got to pony up the 99 cents a month because this is just the way to go. It's easier. Don't have to worry about any backup solutions, syncing it, just do it this way. So basically, if you have any kind of modern phone and you use your phone at all, you're going to go over the free five gigs. So it's like everybody's paying at least a dollar for iCloud. But what's funny is they're not, um, they're not really usable tiers. They're, they're sort of tiers positioned to get you to go to the next tier. So there's, there's a five, five, uh, five gig free tier. Then there's 50 gigs, which I feel like is way too much because I think if they made the free tier 25 gigs, it would be more than enough, but they're never going to do that. So you go from five to 50, which is huge. Then you go from 50 to 200 gigs, which is going to huge jump. And then 200 gigs to two terabytes. It's like for me with my wife, we're on a family plan so we can share the storage. We have 400 gigs of, is it 400 gigs we're using right now? Like 400 gigs um, of storage you're using between the two of us, which is all our photos and stuff like that. A 500 gig plan would be perfect. 
a one terabyte plan would be even better, but of course they don't offer that. So if you go over 200 gigs, you're automatically bumped to two terabytes, which is just kind of stupid. So I love Apple, but their uh, iCloud drive, whatever, the iCloud storage plans are just criminally insane. Yeah, and it's like every time that you, you got to do that family uh, tech support, that's always the issue. It's like, you just got to buy the next year. That's always the issue. Like it'll solve everything I always if you just, just buy the next year. I will say it is a pain, but it is so worth it for peace of mind. Like I know that oh, it's whoever worth it. in my yeah. family, I give it to him. Like, look, your phone could get destroyed tomorrow. It could get, you know, dropped in the ocean, run over by car. Your stuff's safe because it's backed up through iCloud. Just that, that's, it's worth the buck or whatever it is. Do a family plan. I, I will say that as annoying as it is, it is, it's not necessary, but it's highly recommended if you want to have any ease of use uh, with your phone. Um, so we got that. TV Plus, so we're both using TV Plus. I started the only TV Plus show I've watched recently was I started the We Work one. The We, is it We Crashed? Is that the name of the show? Like, no watch idea. one episode. It's, it's okay. But have you watched, I guess, to that point, to that end, are you watching any TV Plus shows now? Absolutely not. I haven't, I haven't even like looked at their catalog and I don't even know how long I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking it up right now just so I could see what, like what shows are even out right now. But no, the last one I watched was season two of the morning show. And that was, I watched that like many months after it came out, which it was not that long ago that I watched that show, but yeah, no. I'm, so now, now yeah. is the time for you to unsubscribe from TV plus. I mean, yeah, like, Apple sure. has taken a quality over quantity approach and we have discussed this at length so i don't think we have to get into it in this one but man i've always talked about who apple could buy or why they should buy someone to buy a back catalog apple tv plus needs a back catalog to compete well they don't have to have it but it would be better apple's approach is well we're going to have a small curated collection of stuff that is um available to stream for five bucks a month i think it's worthwhile for a lot of things especially if you like haven't watched anything for five bucks pay for a month or a couple months and just binge a lot of stuff because there's there is some good stuff on there but it's like once you go through it people are unsubscribing which is why their churn rate is so high because there really isn't a lot there to keep people on like netflix or hbo max it has you know this huge back catalog and this ever-expanding catalog of stuff apple is sort of bottlenecked by the their own decisions to work with very limited production companies and sort of either buy some distribution rights to things or do their own originals. They're kind of um, bottlenecked by how fast they can buy things or how fast they can produce things on their own, which is why I feel like a lot of people are just buying it or subscribing for a few months and unsubscribing because there's not a whole lot. They're always changing. Yeah. And, but you know, in a, in a way their strategy seems to be working a little bit. I'm, I was trying to look up the numbers exactly, but I heard something about that they're actually catching up to HBO in terms of subscribers and, you know, how they're doing. And, you know, like you kind of said, they're very much doing a, you know, what's the word? Uh, what's that one story? The tortoise and the hare or whatever. The tortoise yeah. just keeps going and uh, eventually wins the race. And it seems like maybe that is working. I mean, it, it might take a lot longer to get there. Their quality is very good. Like, there's, there's no doubt about that. Like, the quality is great. Um, everyone loved Ted Lasso. They have these, you know, breakout shows every once in a while that people really seem to love and kind of hit the zeitgeist. But personally, I just don't really care. I like, we just started watching the office again. It's like, there you go. That's all I need. Like, I, I don't really care about, unless it's a show that really speaks to me, then I'm just not that kind of person, but I'm also very, I'm not the demographic here. I don't, I don't really watch TV that much. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see how this is going to play out long-term because in the beginning, it definitely seemed like, I mean, this is not worth even $5, which in the grand scheme of all the other streaming platforms, five bucks is not that much, but, um, it definitely did not seem worth it. But now that they're adding more and more things and, you know, getting recognition through the Oscars and that kind of thing. I mean, maybe, maybe their strategy is going to work. Hey, you made it to the end of this Apple Circle podcast clip, but there is a full episode. So if you want to listen to that, click the video over here. You can watch the entire thing. Or if you're someone who just wants to listen in your headphones, we have the audio version, of course. Links for that where you can subscribe and listen in your favorite audio podcast player is down below. And last but not least, the Apple Circle channel where we have many videos covering everything Apple is also linked down below. So be sure to check that out and get subscribed.